everyone, Reefer Gill here. The purpose of today's video is to share my selection of fish for my new build, and in the meantime here's some footage of my old system that I just took down. I'm reaching out to all of you for feedback that you may have on any of the fish that I've chosen. I also want to make sure that I haven't missed out on any fish I haven't thought of, so if you have a must-have reef safe fish that's not on this list, please leave the name of that fish down below in the comments. This list has been changed several times in the past week and has settled down to the selection of fish I'm about to share with you. The majority of the fish were my choices but a few were Miss Reefer Gill's choices so there's not going to be much wiggle room here. Some of these fish can be hard to come by but I'm going to try to give them a shot anyway. I'm adding the fish slowly and in three phases. The more timid fish and hardy fish will be in phase one, phase two will be the selection of my tangs, and phase three will be the fish that do best in established aquariums or fish that can be territorial. I do plan on setting up a 30 or 40 gallon quarantine tank, hopefully from the $1 per gallon cell at Petco. Depending on the species of fish I'm keeping in the quarantine will determine how long I leave them in quarantine. Fish that are known to be more susceptible to illness will stay longer in the quarantine tank. The majority of the fish on my list are small even as adults. I did consider this when deciding enough was enough fish for my 100 gallon tank. My goal is to purchase all the new fish as juveniles since they have a less likelihood of having learned bad habits that come with some of the species of fish that I've chosen, but mainly to have a better chance at reducing aggressive behavior brought on by competition for territory and food. Ideally, I'd like to purchase as many of these fish from my local fish store, but inevitably I'll have to use online vendors for a lot of the fish. If you have a favorite online fish vendor, please leave their info down below in the comments. I did use Live Aquarius website for the purposes of obtaining pictures of the fish on my list. If you're considering purchasing a fish for your reef aquarium, I would highly recommend you check out your fish selections compatibility using a chart like this one from Live Aquaria. Phase 1 will consist of the following fish. There's no such thing as a reef tank if you don't have a pair of these guys. My pair of black and white clownfish are being held at my local fish store. I've had these clownfish for the past 5 years and become very attached to them. They'll be the first additions to my new aquarium. Unfortunately, they'll have to wait a while before I get them in an enemy. The Midas Blenny. These are little fish with huge personalities. They perch on the rock structures and swim through the water more like a snake than a fish. These guys prefer meaty foods. They're about $45 and do well in 30 gallons and up. The Flame Angel. I've had a Flame Angel for several years in my last system. He was always out and about. I purchased my last flame as a juvenile. He's never shown any aggression towards other fish and never nipped at any of the corals. Unfortunately, my flame was one of many fish that died at my local fish store during an extremely hot weekend. These fish go for about $50 and do best in 70 gallons and up. The Orange Back Fairy Wrasse. You can see the obvious reasons why this colorful wrasse made my list. The healthier these wrasses are, the more vivid their coloration is. They're known to be jumpers, so a tightly sealed lid is a must. They sell for around $75 and do good in tank sizes 75 gallons and up. A captive bred harp tail blenny. An eye catching blenny with its light black body and jet black dorsal fins. This guy's peaceful so long as you don't try to eat it. It does have poisonous fangs it uses with predators to try to eat it. It sells for about $45 and does best in aquariums that are 30 gallons or more. The Bundoon blenny. Another blenny donning a jet black body with bright yellow pinstriping. Like the harptail blenny, it too will deliver a poisonous bite to any predators trying to eat it. You have to admit, it's pretty cool having a poisonous fish and still being reef safe. This guy sells for about $60 and prefers tank sizes of at least 30 gallons. The Hellfrich Firefish, a Miss Reefer Gill's choice because it's purple, very girly if you ask me. It's not even capable of incapacitating me with poison. Just kidding, this is an eye-catching fish. This is a peaceful fish so long as there isn't any other firefish in the tank. It's known to be a jumper, so again, a nice tightly lid is required here. This beauty sells for $90 and can be comfortable in tank sizes as small as 10 gallons. The Tail Spotted Blenny. Like most blennies, this guy has a lot of personality. They like to perch on the rock and are a very peaceful fish. I had one in my previous tank, but it disappeared after the first year. This is another one of Miss Reefer Gill's picks. You can pick one up for around $25 and they do well in tank sizes as small as 10 gallons. The One Spot Fox Face. This cool guy dons a black mask, white gills, bright yellow body with a random black spot near its tail. Another fish predators would be smart to stay away from since the fox face dorsal fins can deliver a poisonous sting. These guys will graze for algae off of your rocks and sells for about $50 and does best in 70 gallons or more. 
Moving on to phase two, the tang stage. I really want a few tangs in the next system. Years ago, I had a 55 gallon saltwater tank and had three purple tangs in it. I kept them for years before giving them away. I had no idea what I was doing back then, but I do know I had zero issues with the three tangs fighting. With that said, they are known to beat each other up and fight to the death if improperly introduced into the aquarium. Even introducing them at the same time is risky, but so many people have successfully done this. Tangs in general are prone to ick and can be very territorial. In an effort to reduce the possibility of aggression towards each other, I picked four tangs that were from different family genus. Tangs are not only gorgeous, but they also play an important role in your ecosystem by eating algae off the rocks. Additionally, I'll be adding all four tangs as juveniles. Well, that's my plan anyhow. First up, the purple tang. I've had purple tangs in all of my systems. I love these tangs. I just think their colors are super cool with their very, very manly purple bodies and bright yellow tails. The prices on these guys have dipped and can now be purchased online for about $160. A fully grown tang does best in an aquarium of 125 gallons or more. The blue tang, aka hippo tang, aka regal tang, aka dory. This tank sports a beautiful electric blue coloration and accents of black and yellow. They will set you back about $50 and do best as adults in 180 gallons or larger. The Coal Yellow Eye Tang. This tank has the same oval shaped body as the purple tang. I like this tank due to its very unique pattern and coloration. These sell for $50 and do best as adults in tank sizes of 70 gallons or more. The Powder Brown Tang. Not much needs to be said here, the picture alone is worth a thousand words. Absolutely stunning looking tang. You can pick one up for about $50 and these guys do best as adults in at least 125 gallons. On to phase three, a male blue throat trigger fish. Similar to fish like flame angels, triggers are one of those fish that you take your chances with. Most triggers will go after your invert cleanup crew members. However, in my limited research, I found that the blue throat triggers are less likely to go after your inverts compared to other species of trigger fish. Again, I'm aiming to get a young male trigger that hopefully hasn't identified cleanup crew members as a food source. Keep him well fed with meaty foods and lower the chances of him going after your shrimp and snails. I also spoke to Mile High Reefer who has two of these in the system. He hasn't had any issues with his triggers. These fish are just too cool for me to pass on. I'm going with the more colorful male shown below the female in this picture. Additionally, these guys make a grunting sound that can be heard outside the tank. You can buy one of these for $100 and they do best as adults in tank sizes of 125 gallons or more. The Diamond Watch Gobi, a wife's choice. I had three of these guys in my 55 gallon system years ago. These guys need an established system as they'll go for microfauna in the sand bed. They are great at turning over the sand by taking in mouthfuls of sand and filtering it out through their gills. A lot of fun to watch these guys at work. They sell for $25 each and prefer at least 30 gallons. The Red Hawkfish. I'd really like to have this guy, but I'm not sure he's gonna stay on the list. I like his body shape. I think he'd bring a variety to the aquarium. He's unique and like the clownfish, he'd also make the anemone his home. Not to mention, he's very cool reddish orange coloration to him. They can go after cleaner shrimp, so it'd be yet another risky fish to add to the system. I'm up in the air on this one, but he sells for $25 and likes tank sizes of at least 30 gallons. The Black Clown Gobi. I've had clown gobies in the past. These guys are very entertaining to watch. He's in phase three simply because they like to perch in SPS corals. They love to perch on the SPS branches and are very easy to care for. They sell for $8 each and prefer tank sizes of at least eight gallons. The Blue Jawfish, another fun fish to watch. They do need a sand bed that's deep enough to burrow underneath of. These guys will likely create a sand cave underneath your rock work. They have stunning blue colored spots on their bodies. They're known to be jumpers, so a lid here is important. They sell for $50 and prefer at least 50 gallons of water. After speaking with Rico from Rico's Reef Tanks and Alex from Alex G's Aquariums, I decided to heed their advice by adding more wrasses to the tank to serve as a supplement to my cleanup crew members by controlling any pests that might be introduced into the system. Please share any experience you may have had, good or bad, of any of the fish on the list. If I missed a must-have fish like a schooling fish, drop a comment down below. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, and leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we shall see you guys next Sunday.